Hey everyone, welcome back to Average Joe's Tech Reviews with your host, Joe. Man, what a wild time it has been. Uh, traveling, getting sick, family getting sick. I got sick at my own conference. I ended up getting bronchitis. So that was fun being in the ER and uh, where was I? <laughs> in, in Alpharetta, Georgia. Uh, in the mid like almost in the middle of the night uh, to get taken care of and and thank God I did uh, so doing well so I thought you know it's time to get back on the horse and and do a review so uh, first off thank you to everyone who uh, comments below and I do my best to hopefully in a timely manner uh, you know answer any questions you have say thanks um, I that's kind of the fun part for me now I like just interacting um, so today we're gonna do uh, a review of a laptop uh, something I've been nervous to do because it's you know it's obviously gonna be a little bit more entailed I know when I did the review for the uh, Blackmagic um, a10 mini uh, pro uh, I think someone had asked about the laptop that I had kind of quickly discussed that I had a Lenovo uh, laptop which was a 4k touchscreen and the reason I'd use that laptop was because the camera right here even though uh, I am normally processing these videos especially going through the ATEM they're gonna be processed at a 1080p level uh, I think this video might actually process as 4k but <clears throat> excuse me the reason I was using that laptop is because of this camera here because it is a 4K camera, I wanted to be able to process it at its full capabilities for editing um, on like a, Adobe Premiere Pro. Uh, and I wanted to be able to pump out what the RAW is, and that's uh, 4K. So I wanted to have that ability without being hampered, uh, constrained to uh, like having like a standard 1080p monitor uh, while wanting to see the actual quality of the RAW and then make a decision from that point. So. Uh, and that one is actually still right over here. And, uh, oh, pardon me. I'm going to go pick it up. Here it is. Nice uh, Lenovo laptop here. And this is the, if you want to get it legit, this is the Lenovo, I, Lenovo IdeaPad 720S Touch 1.5 IKB. This is a 15.6 uh, 4K touchscreen with uh, NVIDIA GeForce 10... Of course, I'm not thinking because I, I'm currently trying to sell it right now on, on eBay, and it's not going so well. I think we're in the age where like, you know, this laptop is definitely worth more than two hundred dollars, uh, but that's all people want to pay for it, and I'm like, no, I'm good. Uh, but this, I believe, has the 1070 Ti uh, NVIDIA graphics card in it, one terabyte, because I had upgraded the hard drive to one terabyte SSD in this bad boy, but. Uh, this has been a really awesome workhorse uh, for my travels and editing and photo and audio, you name it. So, today we're going to be looking at a newer uh, laptop. We're going to be looking at a Lenovo Legion Slim 7, or 7 Slim, however you want to call it. And this is the AMD laptop right here. Here is this beauty right here. I'm going to actually bring it closer to the camera. Here it is. Look at that. This is the Lenovo Legion 7 Slim with the AMD Ryzen uh, processor and this also has NVIDIA graphics within it. This has uh, RTX 2060 uh, graphics card in here uh, plus a 500 gigabyte SSD which is what Windows runs off of and then an extra one terabyte SSD actually came in it. I actually didn't even know that until after I had received it so it was kind of cool to get a little surprise because I thought like oh I should probably uh, order a uh, an extra SSD or get a larger one or what have you and nope it came with uh, with everything uh, you see here and uh, let's go through some of the specs here I want to make sure I had notes it has the AMD Ryzen 7 4800H at 2.9 gigahertz this thing is maxed out at 32 gigabytes of RAM and like I said the 501 terabyte SSDs and it has the RTX 2060 this has a 4k monitor this has it came with this massive beast and heavy brick I swear this thing is like the weight of the laptop. It's pretty powerful. It's a 230 watt brick. Uh, this thing, you know, will charge it. Um, <laughs> and it also surprisingly came with its own dongle. It came with the uh, Lenovo Legion dongle here that has a, 
uh, USB 3.0 on the side and then HDMI and VGA uh, right there on the front and it actually came with the laptop so you didn't have to worry about trying to find something for it which you know of course but at this point when you have iPads and MacBooks and laptops that come with USB-C's you end up having a ton of dongles anyway but it's kind of cool that it came with it so you didn't have to worry about it um, it comes it's it's actually I guess if I was to compare hmm I think my older one is slightly heavier I'm not gonna give you any details because I don't know them so I'm just gonna tell you this one seems a little heavier this one's a little bit lighter uh, it has a nice uh, finished uh, metal finish to it right here nice and smooth uh, it has this O for the Legion actually is an LED light it has uh, two USB C's on the side here with the uh, Lenovo like send a return back button I guess it like activates a software that'll uh, reboot your software backwards and then it has a full-size SD card input and the headphone jack and you have tons of airflow in this thing look at the massive space here on both sides for the uh, for for the the air to flow through and then the entire look at that just airflow like amazing and I've been playing games on this I have been editing videos on this already I have traveled with it and I will say uh, that the airflow is actually quite good and you don't how do I want to describe it I mean, if you look at the older model here from a couple of years ago I mean it has it but you can tell like it doesn't have the big space on the sides like this one has for like this one has and it doesn't make the keyboard as hot if you know what I'm talking about if you've ever used more high-end uh, laptops for editing gaming and and all that stuff is like you know when you're really pushing the graphics the CPU is getting hot the GPU is getting hot uh, yeah uh, that keyboard can feel pretty pretty spicy to the touch uh, I mean it still gets warm mind you but it's not doesn't seem to be as hot to the touch uh, with that constant airflow and uh, let's kind of open it up here for a second just kind of see Ooh, look at that with the nice uh, I love that little space back here where on the back you have two USB uh, 3.0's one is full-time power one is regular and then you have your power plug here uh, they actually give you a little sticker right there and what that does is it tells you how to control your fan in the computer so you can have it be super silent auto or super fast and and honestly even super fast it wasn't really that loud um, it does have biometrics so on the previous one that I have here the biometrics is a fingerprint reader uh, right about here uh, right here in the corner not too shabby uh, easy to access uh, pretty pretty simple uh, with this one it's actually the power button you actually touch the power button once it's once it wants to log in with Windows Hello. Uh, you can use your finger and uh, log on. Um, it's cool and all, but I actually prefer the one in the this computer, the idea book, because it's over here. Where this one, it's like you're bumping into your screen, no matter what finger you're going to choose. So depending on how big your fingers are, um, and you know maybe how long they are, or how what print you're using, you might. It's like you just keep bumping this bottom panel, but whatever uh, to each his own uh, full keyboard which I love to have especially when using this for work and typing in notes it's always nice to have that that nice number pad right there to, to play with so uh, like I said nice finish to it uh, the only downside with the finish is it picks up every fingerprint on this like it's really annoying uh, so it's like I feel like I'm constantly like doing this just trying to at least so it doesn't look messy like right now it looks alright I've been trying to keep it clean but um yeah uh it is a little annoying uh flexibility not a lot of flex in it uh you could tell down here because obviously with all those holes for the airflow it's a little bit more flex but you don't feel like you're gonna break it but yeah if you definitely were to drop this off a table you, you're gonna damage the spring uh pretty darn easily um i have not opened this up to try and upgrade it but the screws you've got the one two three four five six seven eight nine screws here and I've seen a couple upgrade videos where people, because I, again, I thought I was going to be adding a, a, uh, a hard drive to this, and I didn't need to, so that was kind of exciting. Um, so let's go ahead and power it up and kind of show you what it does here. So boom, there we go, powering it up, and uh, 
Here we go. Boom. Legion. That's a beautiful. Looks pretty. And what's awesome is the sticker here with the blue, the white, and the red. That blue, white, and red shows up here uh, on the power button. So you'll know uh, what status you've set your fan to. So pretty interesting, I thought. Uh, so here it is, boot, booting up with Windows 11. Uh, magic finger touch and look at that. Logged in in an instant. There's uh, the computer ready to rock and roll. Uh, I also have the uh, Lenovo Legion uh, mouse here, wireless mouse. It's what actually it's it's all the above. It's what uh, it has Bluetooth and it can also connect by via Bluetooth to the uh, USB that you can hide in here, or it has USB C right there in the front and you can actually wire it and have a wired mouse so you don't waste your battery. But so far this mouse has been pretty darn amazing. I uh, had no issues with it. Um, so let's talk about uses. Obviously, like I said, I've been using it for uh, my video production for this uh, channel. So I got to use it for a couple videos so far. I actually took this because if you remember my Surface 8 uh, preview or review, I talked about just the hassle of having it on your lap. Now, the conference I went to last year, uh, they had lots of tables and everyone sat at tables, which was great especially if you had a Surface. Uh, this year I was like, well, you know, since that keyboard didn't really work out from uh, Bridge uh, for the SB Plus, I was obviously disappointed. Um, I was like, well, what should I, you know what, I'll bring the laptop. Because I wanted to actually get a feel for its battery life uh, and just how it feels to travel with it. So, took it with me to Alpharetta. Thankfully I did, because guess what they didn't have at the conference? Uh, uh, there were some tables in the back, which I ended up actually using. I was able to, like, get myself to a table, like, because there were, like, three tables against the wall. But you're talking 250 people. Uh, so they ended up not having the big tables to have everyone sit around. It was just chairs. And so when I was sitting in a chair, I was able to have the laptop in my lap, no problem. But I chose a table to relax and use my uh, audio recorder to try and record some sessions and take notes while on the computer. So purposefully, what I ended up doing was not plugging in the laptop during the first full day of the conference because I wanted to see uh, how how long could I get the battery to last just doing the simple tasks that I was doing. Um, the only time I plugged it in was basically during our lunch break. So basically I had it unplugged for the first half of the day, plugged it in during lunch just to let it charge up to 100%, which it actually does pretty quickly, and then uh, used it for the rest of the day. Um, I have it set up so when it's unplugged it does that whole... I think it, when it hits 50%, it'll hit the super battery saver mode, all that stuff. Mostly I was using this connected to the uh, Wi-Fi at the location using, I use uh, Evernote as my note-taking app on all my devices. So took a lot of notes. Um, and the times I wasn't taking notes, the screen obviously would kind of blank out or if we'd walk away for a 15 minute break, come back, all I had to do was either hit the space bar, hit the power button and she'd wake back up and be right where I left off so let's see from morning which was about 8 a.m till about the 12 30 lunch break i got her down to about i forgot to take my i forgot to write it down because you know i had all these grand plans but i was starting to get sick and i was enjoying my conference i think it was about 76 percent and that was just doing general note taking during the sessions and then excuse me letting it sit there when I wasn't taking notes. Uh, and then for the second half of the day, it was about the same, 78, 79% of the battery was used. Um, so I was actually fairly impressed with the battery life of the device, just using it for general note-taking workflow, not really uh, working the graphics card and doing a lot of programs. I mean, I maybe did very minimal web surfing to look up things that they were talking about. Um, but really, I was just using Evernote, taking notes, and that was really it. Um, airplane. I uh, ended up wanting to kind of unload some stuff from my brain during the flight home. I uh, ended up using it for about an hour on the plane, and I maybe got it down to 82%. And again, that was just, obviously, it's an airplane mode, no connection to anything, no Bluetooth, and nothing. And I was just typing notes for about an hour. And yeah, so the battery can go quick depending on what you're doing. 
Uh, I did for fun while I was home. I decided to have it 100% charge, sat down on my couch in the living room, and I played, uh, I like some of the classics, like Command and Conquer, um, Star Trek Armada is one of my favorites, and I like the mods that you can get for them, like on moddb.com. And so I was playing uh, the Fleet Ops uh, conversion for uh, Star Trek Armada 2, and so I think I was able to get, gosh, 40 minutes of gameplay before I think I finally like beat all the AI uh, characters I you know the the fleets I was fighting and then I turned off the game and I had about 15% battery left uh, so you know when you're pushing it it's not going to last long kind of like how I talked about with the the surface like you know if I had it unplugged and decided to you know maybe do some photo editing and maybe video editing without it plugged in that battery just goes Beep! it's gone um so that's what i would say about this is you know this is definitely a keep it plugged in computer um it can be charged via usb c um now i personally uh do not have a strong enough i guess i guess it needs a hundred watt uh from the actual usb itself so that sherpa that i have uh the 100 pd i believe it's called I tried to use it to plug it in and charge it, and what it ends up coming with was the the charging device you're using lacks the power to uh, it'll it's too slow, and then it'll charge for like a minute, and then it stops charging, like it won't even accept it because I think out of the Sherpa, the USB C pushes 60 or 85 watts out, something like that. It might be 85. Uh, out and in so it needs a hundred to run and I just personally do not have and I don't know if they actually make one that's travelable like on a plane like there are 100 watt battery packs you can travel with but they don't actually most of them they don't push out a full hundred watts from the like from the USB-C and if you want that you're talking about like the bigger ones that I think are too big for TSA uh, allowing it on the plane or something like that so again I tried researching it just to see like what can I use and it wasn't really working out so you can't like use your iPad charger and you can't use like the Sherpa USB-C so that was kind of a bummer because like I said uh, this thing is this thing's pretty heavy now I'm joking it's not as heavy as laptop but it it's got some weight like this is you know and look and look how big this is like this is this is big and it takes up a lot of space in your backpack and adds weight to your backpack too. Um, I mean, I mean, cause when I traveled, I had my backpack, I had my iPad, I had this massive plug. Uh, I had, you know, all the accoutrements and all that stuff. So this thing's pretty heavy. So we're going to try something real quick here because there's a lot lighter power plug that I have. And that goes with my MacBook pro, um, older model, uh, and so here I have the USB-C that's actually the battery, or the, I'm sorry, the brick, the power brick for the MacBook Pro. You know, it's just this wire attached to the, you know, the big white square that's about this thing, but the thing doesn't have any weight. So let's see what happens. And I'm trying this for the first time. So we're going to see what happens and see if this can legit do what we think it can do. Oh. Oh, there it is. Battery saver. Slow charger to speed up charging. Use the charger that came with this device. So, darn. We tried. We tried. So, and it doesn't, I don't think it makes a difference on either one that I put it in here. Nope. Battery saver. Yep. So, definitely need something stronger. Uh, more wattage to uh, push this thing through. Um, so now we're going to go to the computer itself and we'll show you some of the specs on this computer and let's take a look. All right, everyone. Welcome to the Lenovo Legion 7 Slim, the AMD Ryzen 7 processor. I'm currently using the uh, Legion mouse here, gaming mouse. I'm still getting used to it. It's got some, a lot of buttons on here that I barely know how to use, but here it is. Beautiful 4K monitor. 
Uh, lots of power, packed into a very slim, light frame. Great for traveling and everything in between. I'm not going to really walk through Windows 11 or tell you all about it. We're just going to look at some fun stuff that shows us all about this. So let's go to... There we go. Device Manager. Boom. Here we go. Whew. Look at all this fun stuff. We have two disk drives, like I said, which was super awesome to find. We have the NVIDIA GeForce RTX 2060 with Max-Q design. Now, if you were to ask me, hey, Joe, how many gigabytes of uh, RAM come with this uh, particular uh, GeForce? I'm going to tell you that I don't know. So there you go. That's about as much as you're going to get out of me. Here's the processors. Look at that. There's the AMD with all of its uh, glory. And then uh, you have the biometric fingerprint reader, which Windows Hello will gladly use. So not too shabby. All right. So we have Windows 11 Home. We have the AMD Ryzen 7 2.9, 32 gigs. This thing is amazing. The only difference in this monitor from the previous one is that this one is not, I repeat, not a touchscreen. So there we go. This thing is not a touchscreen. There it is, 3840 by 2160. All right, so now what we're going to do is we are going to perform the 3D Mark demo on this computer. This is just an update while you watch me watch the test. What ended up happening was my screen recording ended up stopped. It recorded the audio but did not continue recording the desktop environment while the graphics test was going on for both the 3D Mark and the Maxon Cinebench. So you get to hear me talk right now to tell you sorry but at least you get to see how lovely it was to sit there all right here we go the 3d mark benchmarks here we have the score of 5020 for the rtx 2060 graphic score of 4663 and the cpu score of 8876 All right, now we're going to do the Cinebench R23 review. And there we go, a score of 93.48. So again, not sure what that will do for you, the average consumer of a device like this but there you go uh everything you need to know uh generics about this computer while we continue to look at the screen here uh having these two hard drives has been awesome uh i use my dropbox a lot and i save a lot of large files especially dealing with video and photography but also lots of files especially as i do sermons and sermon prep for my churches and so for me to have all that space to be able to store those files is beautiful and not have to worry about the running out. Same with using a program like Lagos, which can, I think mine, my collection can take up well over 85 gigabytes uh, worth of data. And that's maybe on the low end. And it's just nice to have a separate hard drive that can handle that. And I can handle all those files. And especially like right now, where I'm screen recording on this and you know the time I've been recording which is not the total time you're gonna see but I'm over a gig now of uh, recording this so it's like this is gonna take up a lot of room just as the raw file itself and then of course the uh, camera has been running the whole time uh, behind me here which I'll go back to talking to you on there in a second and that's gonna be multiple gigabytes of data that I can just load onto this computer without any concern. All right, so I know it wasn't a lot and I tried to show you what I could and I don't, obviously I'll find out when post editing if I needed to scrub any 
identifying markers in my computer so I don't get hacked by some random bad guy. But here's my honest review of this device. Even though like I complained a little bit about the fingerprints, and obviously it's not a 17-inch monitor, so the keyboard, being a full keyboard, is scrunched. And the only issue I usually run into with my pinky is like maybe from reaching up and hitting backspace. I end up hitting the number lock all the time, turning it on and off constantly, and it'll surprise me when I'm writing notes and not looking at the keyboard, and all of a sudden I see the number lock, number lock, number lock on the screen uh, appear, uh, go on and off, and you're just like, ah, oh, that's right, smaller keyboard, but that's okay. And that's really it for my complaints on this thing. For the purposes that I'm using it for, uh, video, audio, photography, uh, notes, gaming, and everything in between, uh, I'm loving it. It's working exactly the way I want it to. Uh, last time I, uh, like, obviously, I, like I said, I think this video that we're doing now is going to be uploaded as 4K to YouTube on Monday. Um, so I'll get to see how it'll render an actual full uh, 4K uh, video session here. But the last few videos I did where I was, you know, obviously rendering from 4K down to 1080p, uh, we're talking 30 minute videos and it was less than 10 minutes for it to render and spit out what I needed and it was perfect. Um, so using it for, you know, uh, Premiere Pro, things like that has been seamless, really quick to load. Um, and obviously you see, I have this behind me uh, for my actual home build one that I've done. And I, th that obviously is my main workhorse for doing videos, but I also, like, I can use this and just go sit somewhere and edit the video while I'm vegging on Netflix or just hanging out, you know, watching the kids play. I can pull this out, do some stuff, and uh, forgot to tell you another feature on the computer that I totally forgot about until I was doing that camera thing where I was waving at you and being all silly willy. Um, right here at the very top, which is almost impossible to see, so I won't even try and bring this to the camera for you. There is a tiny grooved uh, notch right here, and all you do is move it, and it has a camera privacy slide. It doesn't cover over the camera where it's obvious. It's actually behind uh, the camera, like the little peephole there, and you slide it open and your camera's good to go. You slide it closed and now you have privacy so no one can just uh, hack on your computer and watch you and invert, or when you're not ready or whatever, but we live in an age where, you know, Zoom, you have the option like, don't turn on my camera right away. But it's kind of cool it came with that. I've actually had the camera blocked off because uh, I haven't used this for any real meetings uh, yet. And I say yet because I probably will. Um, <coughs> as for workflow, this thing is quick. It's easy. It turns on fast, turns off fast. Uh, everything on it is super fast, super sleek. Um, obviously, like I said, I don't fully understand like the rankings for the CPU and the GPU uh, with those numbers. I just put them up there because I thought, hey, maybe someone wants to see it. I don't know. I'm not a tech genius. Um, but what I can say about this device is... For the weight and the thin, I mean, it's called the Legion 7 Slim for a reason. Uh, this thing packs a punch and really just is a testament to the people that design and build and fabricate uh, the technology today, like from graphics cards to motherboards, that this thing is so thin and so light. You know, when you think about like, I've never really talked about the build I did recently on my computer, my, my desktop here. I mean, you're talking graphic cards that are this big and they're heavy and, and the motherboard and everything and the CPU and the cooling and, and all this stuff. And that thing is a screaming beast, but it's like, this is a little screaming banshee. Like, this thing flies, man. So let's talk about, is it for you? Well, it depends on what you're doing. Are you into doing YouTubing, podcasting, audio, video, or just plain want to have fun gaming and have a lot of space to store and be able to take it with you wherever you go? Uh, if you're into pretty much anything, uh, I'd say this laptop is totally worth it. Um, now, if you ask me, is this like the newest, toppest model? I don't know because when I was on the Lenovo site, uh, they have a Lenovo 7 Slim AMD and a 7 uh, Slim uh, Intel and the Intel one is a lot more expensive, but none of them were this one. 
So they were all 15.6 inch, but they were all like 1080p monitors. I specifically punched in looking for the 4K monitor uh, for the purpose of, because again, I'm using a 4K camera, I want to be able to have the full capability. So, and this is running a 2060, uh, you know, a GeForce RTX, where the other ones that are like the primary ones that usually will pop up first in the Lenovo site are all 3060 uh, RTXs. And so I think this model, I think, is maybe just a little bit older, but it's the only Legion 7 Slim that has the 4K monitor. And so again, I went for it for specific characteristics that I was looking for that I needed uh, to do what I do and to basically continue to do what I'm doing uh, from this uh, previous laptop here. Um, because the, if I remember correctly, this thing will not go to Windows 11 through the Windows upgrade site because the its uh, CPU is just outside of the accepted whatever parameters. So whatever, I don't fully understand that, but um, it's up for sale and we'll be out of here hopefully soon. But right now this thing is great. It's uh, like I said, thin, light, small, perfect to put in uh, your backpack, your carry bag, uh, whatever you walk around with to travel with your computer. Um, this thing is, is, it's beautiful. It's perfect. And especially like, you know, like I said, the Surface Pro 8 is amazing and it has its uses. Now, I don't use it as much because I like having something I can actually sit on my lap because it's called a laptop. So, um, another thing you might want to consider. I love the Surface 8. Um, I think that has been super helpful for a lot of my ministry efforts where because of the travel I do and if I don't want to bring a big old honking computer bag or my larger uh, uh, shoulder over the shoulder bags and stuff, I can just throw that Surface 8 in my very, uh, something smaller, lighter, and I'll take that with me for a trip. Um, the only thing that I love using this and with the Surface um, which where did I oh it's in the backpack here which I may do a tech review I got this just over a year ago and I got it from Indiegogo um, and here it is it's a 15.6 4k portable monitor Wow, look at that baby with uh, USB-C inputs HDMI inputs all your volumes and controls it even comes with its own little resting case to lean against and you know when you have this computer uh, with a, a an extra sizable screen to put next to it. It was great. Like I took this to my brother-in-law's house, the computer, this uh, portable monitor here, and my workflow was amazing because uh, I had my Word document doing notes and writing my sermon here, had my research and readings all on the other screen because obviously, like, look, I'm pretty spoiled on this beast, I'll tell you what, uh, doing workflow here at the house. But when I travel, whether it's with the Surface or this laptop, I will normally have that screen with me. But we're not talking about that screen. <laughs> so, uh, is it worth the purchase? I think so. Uh, the price on this is uh, not as expensive as the uh, Intel versions and not as expensive as the like newest uh, Legion 7 Slims uh, that are 1080p. Um, and the nice thing about Lenovo is they usually have some type of sale going on. The other thing is, is if you're a military, a student, first responder, teacher, professor, college student, whatever, you can use the verify.me uh, app that is built in there and get yourself another sizable uh, discount and uh, you'll be able to get this uh, lickety split from them uh, pretty quick. Um, as usual, I'll put the link to this particular computer uh, down below, how you can purchase it, but also details just all about the computer uh, from maybe even more than I could tell you, like the battery size inside and all that fun stuff. So that's about it. This thing is awesome. I really like it. And it's gonna be my new traveling workhorse right now. And I'm looking forward to uh, making memories with it in the sense of uh, making more of these videos, photography, um, and just plain old playing games, man. It's just fun to be able to play high-end games uh, on a device like this while you're traveling. Now, sure, you won't really be able to play with it when it's unplugged sitting in your car, but if you plug it into, like, a converter or you're at your hotel room or what have you or at the airport plugged into the wall, you can have a jam and good time. Uh, a lot of the games I play in here probably aren't, like, what all the cool kids play. I don't do, like, the PUBGs. I don't do... 
uh, Fortnite, uh, things like that. Uh, I mostly play, like I said, the classic Command & Conquers, the uh, mods for Star Trek Armada 2. I enjoy um, Star Trek Online and Star Wars The Old Republic, the MMORPG. And I also like to play the online version of like... Uh, Grand Theft Auto 5 and things like that so but to have the ability to have the graph graphic intensity that this thing can do just makes it fun you know sure it's a 15.6 inch screen but it's just fun to be able to have portable play and and those type of activities so that's my review I think it's a very well made device I think it's worth every penny and of course if you can get it for cheaper uh, for sales and discounts then go for it um, like I said, it came with everything I needed from a super-sized brick to a dongle, um, and it's awesome. That's all i got to say about it. So I hope you enjoyed this review. Uh, like, subscribe, whatever you want to do. Make some comments, things you like, don't like, I don't know. Have a good time with it. I hope you all have a great week this week, and uh, this is Joe with Average Joe's Tech Review saying peace out. Peace <laughs> out.